Hey guys, welcome back to my channel Electronics Pedia. Today in this video, I am going to explain about the reset domain crossing and its techniques. In my previous video, I have explained about the basics of the reset domain crossing like what is reset recovery, what is reset removal and the definition of the RDC. If you haven't watched that video, please go and check it out. I have given the link in the description box. So let's get started. So uh, before we proceed with the reset domain crossing techniques, I would like to explain what is reset domain crossing one more time. So reset domain crossing is nothing but if you see when the data is going from one reset boundary to another reset boundary. Here if you see we have two resets, uh, reset n1 and reset n2. So the data what, uh, that is launched from this flip flop 1 so is getting captured in the flip flop by the flip flop 2. So if you see the data is moving from this uh, reset 1 domain that is over here and the, to the reset uh, 2. So now when this happens. So there is a possibility of uh, that the, uh, the destination flop can go into a metastable state. Because of that, the, the, your uh, chip may fail. I would like to explain this concept with the help of the waveform. So now, uh, assume this is your clock. Okay. So we have this clock. Okay. Now this is reset N1. Okay, so now in, uh, this reset N1 is basically we have this is something like this. It's uh, uh, asserted, okay. Uh, uh, it's a uh, deasserted over here. This is an uh, active law, and now we have this reset N2. So this is like, something like this, okay. It's there. Now what happens is uh, now assume the reset N2, which is out of the reset. That means it's a reset deasserted, and similarly reset N1. So now uh, the data is propagating from the flip flop 1 to flip flop 2 all is good okay. So now what's happening if the reset n1 goes uh, if it gets asserted okay. So because the reset assertion is asynchronous right because this is the asynchronous reset if it gets asserted somewhere in the uh, near this setup or uh, sorry, the reset re uh, removal or recovery time, uh, window right. So then what happens if it gets asserted like this something like this right. So then what happens. This is anyway out of reset. The Q, uh, the initial assume that the Q1, okay, this is my Q1, okay, this is Q1 and Q2. So this Q1 initially it was one, okay. Now since it's asserted, okay, it went to the zero value, okay. Uh, means the output, uh, the reset value of this flop is a zero. So it was one and it went back to uh, zero. So now what happens is, since the clock is the same, okay. Um, now uh, the D2 will be exactly equal to the q1 but the q2 what happens is that since this uh, this uh, you know uh, d1 input right so this is a d2 input this is a d2 input so it is changing from 1 to 0 uh, at the active edge of this clock so it the q2 might be sampling this uh, wrong way okay so it can be either 0 or 1 and it, or else it's, if we call, it, call it, we can call it as a metastable state so so what if it goes into a metastable state so then the q2 if it propagates further to some other block right so then this also can go uh, into a metastable state and you may you may not you may you may have the undesired outputs so your chip might fail okay your chip might fail so because of this we need to ensure that all of the you know reset domain crossings are also you know checked uh, properly so now uh, unlike uh, you know CDC this uh, um, reset domain crossing is very difficult to catch because this is this can have uh, with a regular you know CDC tools so it's uh, difficult to catch this and also this uh, you know uh, reset domain crossing requires a system level analysis like how these each of the resets are you know getting asserted how these uh, resets are getting deasserted what is the nature of the resets all of these you know things needs to be taken into account. So there are various techniques through which you can fix this, you know, reset domain crossing uh, issues. So I would like to explain all of these, uh, like you know, three or four concepts. So then you will understand how can we fix all of these, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, reset domain crossing violations. So the first method is by the RTL fix. So uh, what is what do you mean by RTL tech, RTL fix? So basically, if you analyze this right so what happens is this d1 uh, the q1 
is going to the uh, D2 uh, the second flop flip flop. So what we will do is since the reset is you know coming from the reset one domain and to the reset two domain. So okay, so this data is going from one domain to another domain. What we will do is we'll break this down and what we'll do is we'll insert a synchronizer in the path. Okay, so this is a standard uh, double synchronizer. Okay, two stage uh, synchronizer. What we will do is uh, once it's inserted, what happens is now the reset of this, uh, you know, uh, what we will give is we will give the same reset as the reset 2. So, for this uh, double synchronizer. Now, what happens? Thus, Q1 is coming on the reset N1, but uh, it is going to the double synchronizer or the two stage synchronizer. Once uh, it hits this double synchronizer, so this double synchronizer can go into a metastable state, okay, momentarily, okay, for some time. Uh, for the, that's the first stage, and the second stage will ensure that you know, the data, whatever we are getting, to, which will be proper, okay. So it's uh, free from the metastable state, and then it can go to the uh, you know the our uh, other all of the flip flops or the other modules. So with a, in, by inserting this uh, you know two stage synchronizer, we can resolve this you know uh, reset domain crossing issue. I already have explained about the double synchronizer, how they work and all. So if you want to go and check it out, uh, I, have, I will give the link in the description also. So you can uh, you know understand better how this double synchronizer will uh, reduce the metastable issue. Now uh, the second thing is uh, about the reset ordering. So this is a uh, important uh, aspect. So reset ordering is at the system level. So you have to understand how these resets are getting asserted and the deasserted. Now, uh, if you uh, 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 like, you know, if you see this right, like reset to n one and reset n two, right? So initially the reset n two was deasserted and then reset n one got asserted. If that happens, then we will see this metastable issue. But what we will do is in the reset ordering, we will ensure that okay. Now when reset n1 is getting asserted okay so that time we will ensure that the second uh, reset is also asserted okay it's also asserted so what do you mean by this so now uh, so now what we will do is here i'll just uh, put this okay now this is a reset n1 initially uh, uh, it was uh, asserted and then it went it was asserted now what happened in the reset n2 it was initially like this it's, it was there so now we will see if this edge falls in the uh, you know uh, the uh, posture edge of the clock so right then uh, we will see the metastable issue but what we will do is for the reset n2 we will keep it in the asserted state that means the the second block so second module or the receiving module is still in the you know, uh, in the in the reset state, it's in the reset state. So what happens is, if it is in the still in the reset state, now even if the reset n one is getting asserted, right? So then what happens by even uh, the data can change over here. Okay, it can go into meta. The data can be toggling. Okay, at the active edge of the clock, but still we will not be able to uh, you know sample that because we are in a uh, reset state. So then what happens is once the data becomes the reset is stable right so the, the reset n1 is stable then only we will you know release this reset n2 so by this ordering what happens is now we are ensuring that the destination is still under the reset state when the source is getting uh, you know uh, as a reset is getting asserted so by this we will reduce this you know metastable issue okay so now uh, coming to the um, uh, one more fix so that is, uh, it's a basically RTL fix itself. It's kind of a, uh, you know, clock getting technique. So what we will do is, so in the clock getting technique, what we will do here, um, instead of this is a fine, it's connected like this, okay. And uh, This is the, uh, the clock is which is going okay. Now what happened when the reset n1 is getting asserted? What we will do is we will that during that time 
we will have a clock gating logic over here clock gating logic so this will ensure when the reset is getting uh, you know uh, asserted okay this is a gated clock so the uh, this clock will be gated off so that means when the clock is gated off to the second module so we will not be able to sample the data so that time this will not go under a metastable condition and when the reset is uh, completely uh, it's again uh, deasserted so that uh, or if it's uh, asserted right so then what happens um, if it's uh, once it becomes stable so then we can uh, you know uh, release this uh, clock so that it can sample the value properly so this is one of the method where we can uh, fix this reset domain crossing now the third method is by adding the waivers or constraints So adding the waivers or a constraint is um, uh, you are telling the tool that sometimes these violations are okay to have because uh, we are taking care of the reset ordering. So that means you are, you are giving the constraint to the tool saying that this is my reset order. So uh, in the if you uh, go through the spyglass uh, uh, you know uh, documentation you will understand that the how to provide this you know uh, RDC constraint. So it's something like a reset order something uh, like this if you, you need to mention and this is my R1 to R2 something like this uh, there's some you know format is there so you can go through that. So where we are what we are doing we are going to mention that R1 is also this is a reset N1 and reset N2. So first this uh, uh, reset oh, sorry okay this is a yeah, reset n2 and reset n1 so we are telling the tool that this will be uh, you know uh, the, the reset 2 will be asserted first and then the reset n1 so so by this what we are telling the tool do not populate the any violations associated with this and there is a one more way so there is a uh, waiver so this is a, you know we will not uh, it's this is a, uh, you know by where once the violations are popped up we are we are going to waive it off manually but this is a tedious process and also it's kind of a risky because you have to analyze each and every violation and uh, then only you have to waive it and sometimes what happens if you change the names or if you, the path gets changed right so then the new violations may uh, pop up and the old waivers may not be applicable so this is a tedious process so we'll try to avoid this but you can give this you know a reset order uh, you know constraint and also there is a constraint called reset filter path where you can mention like you know from reset n1 to reset n2 if there are any violations you can you know uh, suppress those so that's uh, something called a reset filter path so this is also one of the constraint uh, okay so through which you can suppress the all the violations so this is uh, all about the reset domain crossing. I hope this information is useful and please do let me know if you have any queries in the comment section. I will be happy to help. Thank you.